Hello students, welcome to our channel KSS Kurukul. Today we will discuss a topic of class 11 biology, diversity in the living world. Before that, if you are not yet subscribed to our channel, please subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. If we will look around, we find a wide variety of living organisms existing in our surroundings. Not only visible but also invisible microorganisms of different kinds live in this earth. We can easily find the pets like dogs, cats and hens etc. at our home as well as the cows, bulls and buffaloes also the rats, cockroaches and ants. Likewise, in our ponds and rivers we can find the frogs, fishes, tortoise etc. A much larger variety and number of plants and animals are got in dense forests. Now note that each different kind of plants, animals or organisms that we find represents a species. The total known varieties of species yet described is 1.7 to 1.8 million. These varieties in number and type of organisms is what that is called as biodiversity. Usually these varieties of organisms are known to us by different names which are the local names. However, these local names differ from place to place, from country to country, from state to state and even from district to district and between the nearest localities. This often creates confusion while referring an organism to others. For example, in the same state Odisha, the pumpkin is called as Boitalu at one place and Kokharu at other place. Likewise, the long beans are called as Naduka, Barvati and Jhudanga according to the change in localities. This is also true in case of animals. To overcome this confusion, naming of the living organisms was standardized which is called as nomenclature. By which one species of organism became known by one and only one name throughout the whole world. This is the scientific name, not the local names that vary. For nomenclature, first the right description of the particular organism is necessary, which is called identification. It is necessary to identify which scientific name should be given to which particular organism. The scientific naming is based on some principles and criteria which are universally accepted. For naming of the plants and animals, international code has been evolved. For plants, that is for botanical names, international code for botanical nomenclature ICBN and for animals, that is for zoological names, international code for zoological nomenclature ICZN has been evolved. Each scientific name thus formed is exclusive. For that, specific animal or plant only. Each scientific name has two components, they are generic name and specific name. This method of providing names having two components is also known as binomial nomenclature, which was formulated by Carlos Linnaeus. This method of naming is being practiced by the biologists worldwide. For example, the scientific or botanical name of Neem or Margosa is Adiracta indica. Here, Adiracta is the generic name or genus and indica is the specific epithet or species. Let's discuss the universal rules for nomenclature. Biological names are usually in Latin. 
and written in italics. They are Latinized or derived from Latin irrespective of their origin. The first component in a biological name denotes the generic name or genus, while the second denotes the specific epithet or species. While writing a biological name, both the genus and species are separately underlined or printed in italics to indicate their Latin origin. The first word of the generic name starts with capital letters, while that of specific epithet starts with small letters. For example, Mangifera indica, here both Mangifera and indica are in italic. The first letter of generic name M is in capital and that of specific epithet that is I is in small letter. The name of the author who first described that species appears after the specific name. For example, Ajariyakta Indica Lin, here Lin stands for Linus, the author. Next, the subject of discussion is classification. It is the process which is necessary for studying the entire living organism. In this process, all the living organisms are grouped into various categories based on some easily observable features or characteristics. For example, dogs, cats, parrots, squirrels, plants, animals, mammals, arthropods, etc. These all are categories of living organism. The scientific term for these categories is called H. taxon, in plural that is taxa. Taxa can be referred to the categories of living organisms at different level. For example, plant forms a taxon and wheat also forms a taxon. Similarly, animal, mammal and cow also form taxa at various levels. Each cows belongs to category of mammals and mammals belong to category of animals. This categorization or classification of entire living world which is based on some characteristic features of them is called taxonomy. Now let's know what is the aim of this classification. To make the study of living organism easy and systematic. To know the relationship between them. To make the study of a great many variety of organisms possible, which otherwise would be impossible. Now, what are the basis for modern taxonomic studies? External and internal structure, structure of cell, developmental process and ecological information of the organism. Next is what are the basic features of taxonomy? They are characterization, identification, classification and nomenclature. However, taxonomy is being used by the humankind since the early days. Only then its basis was the uses of various organisms rather than their morphological features or other modern basis. Because during that time the requirement of classification was only for fulfillment of their minimum needs, that is food, clothes and shelter. For example, the primitive man knew the difference between poisonous and non-poisonous plants, edible and inedible fruits. They also knew which animals live birth and produce milk and which ones lay eggs. Since long human being is interested in knowing the various organisms, their diversities and the relationship between them. This is called as systematics. The word systematics has been derived from the Latin systema 
means systematic arrangement of organisms. In his book, Systema Natura, Linnaeus has described about systematics. However, the study of systematics later included identification, nomenclature, and classification. Now, come to the point, why are the classification system changing now and then? The first point is evolution. Due to evolution, the characteristics of species are continuously changing or modifying with generation. Also, due to advancement of science and technologies, the new and different characteristics of different species are being learned and thus the viewpoint of classification is being changed. Though millions of living organisms have already been discovered, Many new species are also being discovered yet. It is a continuous process. We cannot fit all of these species to the existing classification system. Also, some species are now extinct which existed previously. For example, dinosaurs. Science is ever changing and also the classification system. Now let's learn what are the different criteria would you like to choose to classify the people that we meet often. We can classify them by their gender. Secondly, temperament. For example, whether he or she is angry, mild, cheerful, sad or serious, etc. Third, behavior. Like whether he or she is gentle, sour, rude, talkative, extrovert introvert etc fourth clothings that is according to geographical location and culture and type of clothes fifth by their language sixth whether they are the family members or other than family members seventh by profession for example teacher lawyer doctor etc and eighth, the educational level. Now come to the summary. Different kind of plants, animals or organisms that we find represents a species. The total known varieties of species yet described is 1.7 to 1.8 million. Biodiversity refers to the varieties in number and type of organisms. Nomenclature is the process of standardized naming of living organisms by which one species of organism become known by one scientific name which is exclusive for that specific animal or plant only. Identification is the process of description of the particular organism which is necessary for nomenclature. Binomial nomenclature is the method of providing names having two components to various plant and animal species. It was formulated by Carlos Linnaeus. The scientific term for each category in classification of organisms is called as taxon. In plural, that is taxa. Taxonomy is the process of categorization or classification of entire living world based on some characteristic features of them. In early days, the basis of classification of organisms was the uses of them. Basis for modern taxonomic studies are external and internal structure, structure of cell, developmental process and ecological information of the organism. This was all about this topic. Feel free to subscribe, like, share and comment your valuable views. Thank you for watching.